The Refugee Chapter 1 The last one of this long procession of silent men and women was a little wizened old man. Even he carried a load of two baskets slung on a pole on his shoulder, the same load of a folded quill, a cauldron. But there was only one cauldron. In the other basket it seemed there was a quilt extremely ragged and patched, but clean still. Although the load was light, it was too much for the old man. It was evident that in usual times he would be beyond the age of work and was perhaps unaccustomed to such labor in recent years. His breath whistled as he staggered along, and he stared in his eyes to watch those who were ahead of him lest be left behind, and his old wrinkled face was set in a sort of gasping agony. Suddenly he could go no more. He set his burden down with great gentleness and slung upon the ground, his head slung between his knees his eyes closed, panting desperately. Stark as he was, a little blood rose in dark patches on his cheeks. A vendor selling hot noodles said, his stand near, and shouted his straight cry, and the light from the stand fell on the old man's drooping figure. A man passing stopped and muttered, looking at him, I swear I can give no more this day, if I am to feed my own even nothings but noodles. But here is this old man, well I will give him the bit of silver I earn today against tomorrow, and trust to tomorrow again. If my own old father had been alive I would have given it to him. He brought out of his ragged guardian a bit of silver coin, and after a moment's hesitation and muttering, he added to it a copper penny. Dear old father, he said, with a sort of bitter heartiness, let me see you eat noodles. The old man lifted his head slowly. When he saw the silver, he would not take it, he said. Sir, I did not beg of you. Sir, we have good land, and we have never been starving like this before, having such good land. But this year the river rose and men stop even on good land at such times. Sir, we now have no seat left. We have eaten our seat, I told them. We cannot eat the seat, but they were young and hungry, and they ate it. Take it, said the man and he dropped the money into the old man apron and went on his way sighing. Chapter 2 The vendor prepared his bowl of noodles and called out, How many will you eat, old man? Then was the old man stared. He felt eagerly in his apron and when he saw the two coins there, the one copper and other silver, he said, One small bowl is enough. Can you eat only one small bowl? Then asked the vendor, astonished. It is not for me, the old man answered. The vendor start astonished, but being a simple man, he said no more but prepare the bowl. And when it was finished, he called out, Here it is. And he waited to see who would eat it. Then the old man rose with a great effort and looked the bowl between his second hand, and he went to the other basket. There while the vendor watched, the old man pulled aside the wheel until one could see the sunken face of the small boy, lying with his eyes fast closed. One would have said the child was dead, expect that, when the old man lifted his head so that his mouth could touch the edge of the little bowl. He began to swallow feebly until the hot mixture was finished. The old man kept murmuring to him, They are my heart, they are my child, your grandson, said the vendor. Yes, said the old man, 
the son of my only son both my son and his wife were drowned as they walked on our land when our dikes broke he covered the child tenderly and then squatting on his haunches he ran his tongue carefully around the little bowl and removed the last trace of food then as though he had been fed he handed the bowl back to the vendor but you have the silver weight carried the vendor astonished to see that the old man ordered no more the old man shook his head that is for seat he replied as soon as i saw it i knew i would buy seat with it they ate up all the seat and with what shall the land be sown again if i were not so poor myself said the vendor i might even have given you a bowl but to give something to a man who has a bit of silver he shook his head puzzled i do not ask you brother said the old man well i know you cannot understand but if you had land you would know it must be good to sit again or there will be starvation yet another year the best i can do for this grandson of mine is to buy a little seat for the land yeah even though i die and others must plant it the land must be put to seed he look up his load again his old leg is trembling and is staring his eyes down the long straight street he is staggered on